in our last video, we saw the dominated conversions theorem and now it's time to put it into practice by solving this exercise. If you're finding these videos valuable, then we would really appreciate it if you could make a small donation with the link in the description of the video on Coffee. Every small donation helps us bring more videos such as this one into the channel. We're going to solve exercise 19 in section 2.3 of Folland's book. And I'm only going to solve part A because part B is very valuable if you try and think about it yourself. In part A we have a sequence of functions in L1 that converge uniformly to some function f. And what this is telling us is if we have a finite measure then this limit function is in L1 and the integrals of the sequence converge to the integral of f. So basically, we can pull the limit out of the integral. Well, anytime we have something like this, when we're given some kind of conversions hypothesis, the first step is to write what this conversion means. So what does uniform conversions mean? Well, it means that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists some natural number n that only depends on epsilon, and that's the important part between uniform and pointwise conversions. So n only depends on epsilon such that fn of x minus the limit at x is less than epsilon for every n greater than this natural number n and finally for every x. Here the last condition is for every x because we don't want this n or this n, we don't want any dependence on x. This is uniform. It happens uniformly on x. Well, this is something that we have because we're given the sequence that converges uniformly. So we have this for every epsilon. In particular, we can just take epsilon to be 1 and then we have that this is going to be less than 1. So there exists 1n for which this happens. The first thing we have to prove is that this function is in L1. So for that, what we do is we calculate the integral of f, of the absolute value of f. And now integrating something is the same as integrating something plus zero. So we're going to do pretty much the only trick that we know in analysis, that is subtracting something and then adding it again. And now we can use the triangle inequality because we know that these functions are in L1 so we don't care about having the integral of fn. And we can get this term here which is what we have from uniform conversions. This will give us the integral of f minus fn and then plus the integral of fn. And here we have this term that is finite because fn is in L1. So this gives us less than, and we're going to have the integral of 1 plus this other integral that's finite, so we don't worry. And now what happens with this integral? We are integrating the constant function 1 on the entire space. Well, this is the measure of the entire space. But our hypothesis was our measure is finite. So this is a finite number. So we have one finite number plus another finite number. This is also finite. And this implies that f is a function in L1. Great. So we proved the first part. Now we have to prove the second one. Well, I already told you we are going to use the dominated conversions theorem. And for the dominated conversions theorem, what we need is to find a function g such that we can bound all these functions fn with g. So how do we do that? Well, here we have something that relates the integral of fn with the measure of our space. 
and we said that this sum was finite. So what we have here from the last line is that there exists some constant that can be very big, but it's just a finite number, such that the measure of my space plus the integral of these functions is less than or equal to this number c. So the integral of fn is less than or equal to c minus the measure of my space. And what I can do is take c large enough so that this number is positive and then because we have this implies that fn is less than or equal to this number almost everywhere, mu almost everywhere. And so we were able to bound the sequence by a positive number because I can just take c large enough. Great, we have found that function g. And now from this, immediately, because we have the pointwise conversions of fn to f and the upper bound for the sequence, then applying just the dominated conversions theorem, we have that the integral of f is the limit of the integrals of fn. And this is exactly what we wanted to prove here.